Star Wars, the original trilogy, because come on, we aren't masochists. A classic tale of adventure, the ultimate hero's journey imposed on a vividly realized vision of a galaxy far, far away. Yeah, it's okay. Oh, it's more than okay. It's a genre-defining classic and you will not ruin this for me. Now, our hero is the angsty 1970s space teen Luke Skywalker. Unless you're a cool kid, in which case you're after Han Solo, the rugged smuggler who actually had a career after 1983. Or maybe you're the bun-rocking princess who starts the story in the clutches of the nefarious Darth Vader. Darth Vader, basically Dick Cheney in a cape, is just chilling on his Death Star, you know, blowing planets up at the behest of the government. Until our heroes arrive to rescue the princess, steal the Death Star blueprints, deactivate the tractor beam, have some kick-ass laser battles, escape from a trash compactor, and the worm monster within. Here's a question, why doesn't the worm die every time the trash is compacted? It has a door. They hear it open. Okay, why does it have a door? Look, I just think if you're building a planet-sized battle station, it's the size of a small moon, it, whatever it is, okay, if you're building this thing, you need to stick to schedule, okay? You need to have a very tight plan. No unnecessary excess. Building a worm door is gonna take up somebody's entire day. Okay, you're adding hinges, you're taking measurements, you're researching the average growth of a trash worm. I think the bigger issue is that the government has built a moon-sized space station with the explicit purpose of destroying planets. There is no bigger issue, Bob, okay? These are all important issues. The worm door is an earmark. Can we and move on from the worm door? Look, the point is they get off the Death Star and then they blow it up, which is what always happens to Death Stars. Part two. Well, technically episode five, but we won't go into that. In Empire, things get a lot worse for the rebels. They get stuck on ice planets and have to accessorize with parkas. Their ships won't work and they're constantly getting their asses kicked up and down the galaxy. There are bounty hunters after them, nowhere is safe. Meet EDM DJ Boba Fett, the ultimate badass. Badass? 90% of the time he just stands around with his arms folded, then he dies because of a jetpack malfunction. Hey, he crawled out of the Sarlacc pit in the extended universe and he went on to battle We're with- We're talking about the movies here, Bob. Your little Boba Fettish doesn't apply. He dies because of a faulty jetpack like Arnold Schwarzenegger in Jingle All the Way. Wait, Arnold doesn't die in Jingle All the Way. Part three, here we go. After getting their sh rocked in Empire, the rebels have to come back and rescue Han Solo from the Al Capone of slugs, Jabba the Hutt and Jabba has a pet Rancor chained up in his basement. Here's what I'd do, I'd buy 50 Rancors. They can't be that expensive, you can feed them dead guys in garbage, they aren't all that big compared to a small moon. I'd have a whole floor, a whole ship, just Rancors, mind-controlled Rancors, and that is how I'd win your little Star War. Okay, well, in the movies that we're talking about, it's Lando who wins the war. He blows up Death Star 2.0. He gets little to no recognition, and the good guys win the day. Yeah, with no plans for the future, no government set in place, it's gonna be a messy few years for the galaxy. Oh, uh, whatever. Anyway, that's the Star War. Wait, we didn't even mention that Vader is Luke's father. It's Did been you... like 40 years. You know, everybody knows that. Next, you're gonna tell me Rosebud was his childhood dog. Hey, we know. Rosebud wasn't his dog, it was his- TLDW, where's Lando's medal? <laughs>